great. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, and I'm gonna be, I'm working from two screens. So uh, my apologies if it if I'm looking off. Or off. <laughs> um, so rapid response uh, strategic planning. What is it? Um, first, I would like to start with a quote from Ann Walstad. We are only as strong as our ability to change. Um, we have been faced with many things over the last three years as nonprofit organizations. And we have to be flexible, we have to be ready to pivot, and we have to be strategic um, around the moves that we make for our organizations. So again, why is this important? Uh, Real-time strategies are crucial. Uh, we've got to maintain public engagement and support. We've got to continue to provide services and interventions. Um, and we've got to uh, stand on the fact that we are the experts in our area. And while we may not um, be uh, ready for what is coming, we're ready to uh, create strategic, um, uh, implement strategic plans to ensure that we continue to serve our constituents and our community. Um, and we've got to also uh, assure people that we're going to do it efficiently and effectively. And you also will get, I believe you'll get the PowerPoint um, along with this. So don't worry about notes. So uh, what is rapid response? This is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, also called real-time strategic planning. Um, we'll talk about the five principles for strategy development. And we'll have big questions that we need to ask ourselves or what are big questions and when they come up, how do we approach them? I'm going to give you a tool uh, called the strategy screen, and it is simply questions you need to ask when you are about to implement new programming or address a perceived problem as part of a strategic plan. And then I'll also give you guys some uh, time to ask questions. So let's start with definitions. Definitions are important um, because it helps us level set. It helps everybody to be on the same page and we're all speaking the same language. Sometimes in nonprofits, one organization or person is saying one thing with a term and another organization using that same term is saying something else. So we wanna kind of make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so let's start with strategy because it's, all, it's while we're here and it's always um, used especially when it comes to planning. And strategy is a coordinated set of actions aimed at carrying out the nonprofit mission in achievement of its goals. Key word here is actions. Strategy is actions. Um, rapid response simply means to act quickly. And real time is the actual time during which an event is taking place. So why you're like Dewana, this is, you know, this is uh, vocabulary one-on-one, one-on-one, 101, but it's because these meanings are important so that everyone understands where, what we're talking about. And this is not your, your three to five year strategic plan. When COVID happened, we had to all come up with a strategic plan and we couldn't think three to five years down. We had to think six months, three months, six months, and then we realized we needed to think a year out. So this is really what will help you guys in your decision-making in the future. So I reiterate this, a strategic plan should be focused on actions. Strategy is all about action. Those cannot be disconnected. If they're not connected, you don't have strategy. So let's talk about the principles for strategy development. Know yourself mean or your organization, know your market, uh, who are you serving, why, um, build on your strengths, but what are your strengths? You've got to be able to identify your strengths at all times. Make decision-making criteria explicit. And when uh, near the end, when I talk about the strategy screen and I see uh, Maurice in the house, uh, we did some work with uh, Jasper 
uh, Jasper County Arts Council. So some of this is going to be a repeat for him. So, hey, Maurice. Um, and he can talk at the end about their strategy screen and how it's effective for them. Um, but make decision making explicit. It, you can't be wish, wishy-washy. You have to say, this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it with this intended impact. Um, and honestly, real-time or uh, rapid response planning is know that impact, know what you're gonna do, know why you're gonna do it so you can share that story as you begin. Um, and then identify your big question. So let's talk about these elements of strategy. When know your organization. Does your organization have an identity statement? Well, if you've been strategic planning in the traditional way, you should. And an identity statement is just a clear understanding of who the organization is and what it stands for. Your mission, your vision, who are you serving? Why are you serving? Um, and it's also to help ensure the organization's strategies, there's that word again, and actions are aligned with your core identity. So I'm going to uh, take a beat here and talk about mission drift. Um, that is real. Some of the communities that we serve have a myriad of needs. And we might start out with one particular, trying to address one particular focus area. And what we find is that focus area is impacted by all these other areas or all these other things. And we start to um, say, well, we can do this and we can do that. And, and then you look at what you're actually doing and it may or may not be in alignment with your mission. So understand that you have to watch out for mission drift and you always have to ask yourself the question, is this in alignment with what it is we need to be doing. And if it's not, are we the right person or organization to be doing this? If you're not, are there resources out there to help you do this work? Because we can't do what you've, I know you all know if you're working in nonprofits, we can't do any of this in silos. So, um, and also if you guys have any questions I talk fast and I have a lot of material I want to get through. And, and so please don't hesitate to um, raise your hand, ask a question or just jump right in. So, so another thing you guys need to consider when planning and especially when uh, strategically planning um, in a rapid response way uh, is to look at your current programs and services. You've got to do an inventory. Uh, what are you doing? And, and it, need, it needs to be comprehensive um, of all your programs, including these following details. The purpose of the program, the target audience, the resources required to um, effectively manage and execute this program and the outcomes. What are you guys expecting? Again, you're like, Dewana, this is, is standard uh, strategic planning. It's also, you know, standard program uh, reviews. This needs to be done more than we probably actually do in nonprofits uh, because sometimes you might not realize that you are, well, we always realize we're under-resourced, but you are way under-resourced uh, to do what it is you're trying to do effectively or to have the impact that you want to have with your community. So doing a program and service inventory at least, if not once a year, every 18 months is important. Um, and let me back up a little before I, I go through these others. Um, I believe that the rapid response or real-time strategic plan should be um, an ad addendum or an amendment to that three to five year plan. So many times we have a three year strategic plan and we look at it when the plan's been finalized and presented to the board. And then we look at it six months before that plan is up. 
And in the meantime, it's not like you haven't been doing the work, but you maybe haven't always ensured that that work is tied to the plan. But with a real time uh, strategic plan, you can take your larger plan and figure out what do we need to do for this fiscal year and then create a smaller plan and work that plan. And it has you, one, always referring back to the original large scale strategic plan and two, breaking that plan down into bite sized pieces, but also into um, real um, breaking it down time wise. So if you can get it done in six months, why would you wait till the last six months of, of that three year period when it might benefit you more in year one of that three year plan? Does that make sense to folks? Okay, I see a couple head nods. Great. So again, I love I love short term planning. Um, I feel like it you get those wins faster, um, and you also can pivot faster if you realize something isn't working for you. So let's talk stakeholder consultation. Again, you guys need to be looking at this every twelve to eighteen months. Who are your who are your uh, stakeholders? The key stakeholders. Who are your employees, customers, partners, clients, beneficiaries? Gather insight about these, the services and the programs that they're aware of. Um, what are they, if they're a client, what services are they actually utilizing for you? Do they feel like they're actually getting benefit from these services? We need to be asking these questions a lot more frequently because again, if you've got this three year path that you're on, in year one, you figure out that people are not even accessing these specific services, then why are you continuing those specific services? So you get to pivot, respond faster to the needs of your uh, constituents. Um, okay, nobody, I'm glad that we're virtual. Nobody can throw tomatoes at me. Documentation analysis. You gotta look at your annual reports. You gotta look at the strategic plan. Um, project reports and marketing materials. How many times do we do these things that go out to, if it's a, a grant report or a project report, it goes out to the funder or it goes out to uh, the collaborators and then you don't look at it again. Look at those, trend them out. I see that uh, La Ruchula has um, posted a post-it note on her door. I love post-it notes. Look at the trends, trend those things out, put on, put some big post-it notes up. I love them um, because it helps you see your program, not just from uh, the doing it every day point of view, but hey, what's the impact of this program? What are the resources for this program? What are the um, things that happen to be slowing us down? What are the things that, what happened that, that pushed us along? If you review your documents, it'll tell your story and uh, help you uh, revise and do your work faster, better, stronger. Financial assessment. We all have to do 990s at the end of the year. What do we do? Do we stick it in a drawer when it's done? Check, turn that into the IRS. I suggest you go back, you look at those revenue and expenditures, you um, you look at the last three to five years, what are the trends financially and uh, who's giving more, who's giving less? These help you figure out, oh, wow, grants kind of dipped, but we got this large, unexpectedly, we got this large donor. How can we keep that individual engaged and so that they continue to give and maybe bring some of their friends along? Uh, Performance metrics reviews, you got to look at the performance um, in outcomes, impact, what kind of feedback you're getting, and not just for the reports, but also what are they telling you? If you keep seeing the same message over and over from parents or from funders, or you've got to take action on that. You have to make that turn, that becomes a strategic item that you want to become, uh, make actionable. Um, your website and your social media. 
these need to be audited. Y'all, I can't tell you the number of times a funder has um, said, well, I went to the website and it didn't tell me anything. They are checking you out. Um, they want to know what you're doing. They want to know who's with you when you're doing it. They want to know who's like in your uh, messages, rah rah you and cheering you on. Make sure your website and your social media reflects what's actually happening for your organization. It also can help you uh, pivot or strategize for what needs to happen. Because if you've got folks in there saying, I'd like to see you guys do this service over and over and over, and you're like, oh, that's a nice comment, like, but never, uh, <laughs> never addressing it, that can be a problem for you down the line. So also the final one in this area is strategic alignment check, uh, evaluating how everything lines up. Is it all leading back to the mission, the, vig the vision, and your strategic objectives or your larger strategic plan? Um, if it's not, do you need to be doing it? Are you the right person or the right organization to do it? I am uh, a big proponent of things that nonprofits should stop doing. We're always asking ourselves, what more do we need to be doing? We need to be asking ourselves, what do we need to stop doing? Because it's all about efficiency and effectiveness and providing and getting to the outcomes that you're really there for. Competitive advantages, questions, and these are all things you have to look at when you're building out this strategy. What makes you different and better? And you need to look at it from the customer's viewpoint, customer, client, beneficiary, whatever term you want to use. What is visible and obvious? What are people saying to you? Oh my God, y'all did that so well. That's amazing. Uh, what is measurable? Where you can say, look, we did X, Y, and Z, and we got these outcomes, and we blew it out of the water. That's your competitive advantage. That's where you need to sit and figure out how can you do more of that? Because it's moving the needle the direction you want to go. It's, it's, uh, show your work, it's showing you that your work is effective. Again, back to the money. We always got to talk about money. You need to understand your current funding and your untapped funding. Look at all these, and there are more, but these are the basics. Look at the funding, uh, the, the regular funding uh, revenue, where most of our revenue comes from. What's not so great, and how can you improve? How can you move that just 2% um, and maintain the big, you know, if private dollars are it for you, how do you maintain that? And how do you bring those corporate uh, dollars up or how do you get more sponsorships or, you know, what do you, what does the price need to be for a paid event? Um, do you need to be applying for NEA grants? Do you need to partner with other organizations to get that? Look at that funding and now like create a funding analysis and have it review it once a year so that you know where you stand financially. Other things to consider, <laughs> your geographic area. It's a big deal. Um, I will, hopefully no one here is on the school board, but uh, geographically, Charleston County's school district is having a bit of turmoil. And so nonprofit organizations that work with the school district are finding that some things are in flux, maybe not necessarily financially, but uh, in terms of how they're able to have an impact. Because if y'all don't think what happens at the school board uh, touches the majority of our, our um, folks, we, we are mistaken, um, and, and especially in the nonprofit space. So uh, identify things that are happening in your area that could potentially impact your work. What could push you further, faster? What's going to throw some roadblocks up? Um, so this is a new, con not new concept, but I, I don't think this is done as much. So small business owners are always told before they begin marketing, before they begin messaging, they need to have a detailed avatar of their customer. So an avatar is a picture, basically. We, we say avatar for social media, um, but an avatar, you know, so your avatar of a 
a middle aged black woman in the South. Her name is Dewana. She lives in Charleston. She's self-employed, like your avatar literally are characteristics of the folks that you serve. And you have to, because we can't be super specific because we know our families are different, our kids are different, our organizations that we serve are different, but you have to have at least some type of picture of who you're serving, um, what are their main characteristics, um, you know, and sometimes get down to the level of where they live, where they shop, where they work, uh, what's their income, do they go to church? Like you need to understand at a detailed level who you serve because that's going to impact how you pivot, how you plan and what your strategic actions will be in the future. So this is one of my favorite sayings, shift Opportunities for growth are simply shifts that need to happen. And we've often heard shift happens without, a, uh, <laughs> without the F, but uh, shift needs to happen. Organizations cannot remain stagnant or that anything that doesn't grow dies. It is just the laws of nature. And that includes organizations. If you guys aren't operating at a level um, of your peers or, or even ahead of your peers. Cause sometimes we're like, Oh, we'll just do enough. Cause so-and-so is doing that and we'll do that. Nah, like you sometimes need to pull ahead of the pack and show them how to do it. And so that's shift happening opportunities. COVID was an opportunity for many businesses, uh, to realize that they didn't need all that real estate. That a large portion, if not all of their workforce uh, for some companies could work from home. And with the right setup, a computer, a printer, uh, some Wi-Fi is probably exponentially cheaper than rent and utilities and parking and all the things for an office. So that shift happened and many folks are still able to benefit from COVID shift to working remotely for employers who are like, come back to this office because we still pay in rent there. They are getting some pushback. Now, if you work for uh, uh, Ford on the plant line, you've got to be there. But if you are a programmer or a coder for some organization and you can work from home, does Google really need to have an office with a ping pong table for you? So these are questions, opportunities for growth, big questions that organizations have to ha ask themselves. And this also applies to small nonprofits. So this is my favorite part of, the, um, of this work, because if you guys don't take anything else away from this workshop, take this strategy screen and you will get these questions. Before you do anything new, ask yourself these questions. Does it fit your mission, your vision, and your values? And I challenge you to make sure that it's a yes for all three of those first questions. Uh, is it of interest to the population you serve? How many times have we done something because we thought, oh, this is going to be amazing? and nobody shows up. And the community is like, why did y'all do that? Y'all didn't ask us if that's what we wanted. Let's ask people what it is they want or what it is they need before we just jump right out there. So here's, this is very important. Is it affordable? Is it in the budget? If the answer is no, because no is not always a showstopper, can you raise the money? Do you have, and if you can raise the money, do you have the human capital you need to make this work? So it's great if you get a $100,000 grant to execute um, an amazing project, but do you have the staff to do that? And will part of that grant money be to hire this uh, a person 
or do you need several persons? Do you need part-time? Do you need full-time? So many questions to ask with, is it affordable? But we sometimes forget to ask about human capital. So let's make sure that we keep that question always as part of the, is it affordable? Not just, is it in the budget or can you raise the money? Do you have the human capital? Because that will determine, do you need more money? Because, oh, well, that little bit of money you just said is not going to be enough. So we're going to have to up that ante. Um, being, strategy is really asking the right questions and aligning the answers of those questions with the right actions. Um, does this contribute to your intended impact? If it's not getting you where you say you want to go, why are you doing it? And does this have the potential to increase your growth? So yeah, we do this. We're not only heading in the right direction, but we can expand while we go head on. Um, and a supplemental, what's the goal? Now, this the goal question doesn't always have to accompany your, strat your strategy screen, um, but I think it's very helpful to kind of and that might be the question to ask before you even ask the strategy questions. What's the goal of this event, program, collaboration, whatever? And then ask these questions. Um, and honestly, if you do this every time someone comes to the table with a good idea, it becomes part of the way that you work. And before y'all even sit down, that team member is going to be like, okay, here's the goal of this event. Yes, it fits our mission or no, it doesn't fit our mission, but let's make an argument about how it could. Because no doesn't always mean a never. It could just mean not right now. So if again, this is my favorite thing for planning. Use this strategy screen. So what are big questions? Um, big questions are an opportunity or a threat to which the organization must respond Sometimes you, we don't have a choice. <laughs> Sometimes we have to deal with what we have to deal with. Um, it's usually beyond the scope of the organization and what you currently do, and it will require new strategies. COVID's so easy to say. Uh, right now, a current strategy is to get your COVID shot for those you know who are so inclined or not, but it's now being treated like the flu. Let's look back 20, 2020, uh, four years ago, we didn't know what this thing was. And now it has become part of our living. So that's big questions come up unexpectedly. You have to, you have to be able to, after the shock of it, sit with it and figure out, okay, what is happening? So a loss of a funder, a large funder, Boeing has supported you for the last five years. And they say, well, we're going to pivot and we're just only going to fund education or we're only going to fund the arts. And if you fall in something outside of that, what does that mean for you? How do you then scramble to replace that funding at the same rate or a higher level? Um, a change in demographics in your service area. How many of you, we live in the low country, many of us, and I guarantee you, if you live anywhere along the coast of South Carolina, the demographics from 10 years ago do not look the same. Have the services in the area caught up to that? Are you still offering services at uh, the same level or higher level, depending on what uh, your organization does? Um, we have a whole lot, like here in Charleston, tw in 2000, I believe uh, 20 to 22% of folks living in Charleston were African-American. In 2024, 6% of folks living in the city of Charleston are African-American. That is something that this area is having to contend with change of demographics. So the folks we were offering services to in some of those neighborhoods, those neighborhoods don't look the same. And so they're like, eh, we don't need your mobile uh, health van. Thank you, <laughs> but no, we don't need it. So 
these are big questions that impact uh, an organization's ability to do their mission, to complete their mission. So here's another uh, tool for you guys uh, to use when planning, and it's a strategy pyramid. So the pyramid is, we, you know, pyramids work with the base being, you know, the thing that holds you up. The program is the heart of the, the, the thing. And then the organizational is the head. So when you look at the strategy pyramid, think of it that way. The body, uh, the thing that you need operations, it enhances your efficiency, preparedness, and your execution. Programmatic, that's, that's, that's the meat, the heart of what you do. Your impact, the organizational, it's the resources, uh, the supporters, the donors, the board, anything and anyone that supports your pursuit of your mission. When you're thinking about uh, your strategy, identify which area needs shoring up the most. Is it the, organ the operational? the programmatic or the organizational. All right, so I am exactly where I wanted to be at 545. I don't know how I did it, but uh, thank you, Lord. So this is an opportunity for us to have more uh, discussion. You guys ask questions, share. Uh, you talk to me because y'all, I could keep talking all night. Well, I've had an opportunity to experience um, all of this because I was a part of um, the Jasper County Arts Council project. So, you know, I love everything that you're doing. That's why we engaged you again anyway. Um, but this is great. I love the strategy screen as well. And I also love the operational, the programmatic and the um, organizational strategy pyramid. So thank you so much. So uh, Tamara, can you tell us a little, like, talk about the strategy screen and share how that works? And I'll well, someone ask for you. Um, for for um, the Jasper County Arts Council, um, you know, it was, we're, we're just trying to figure out, oh, Maurice is here. Maurice, you talk about it because it's your project. <laughs> I, love I it was because... hoping you would pick I was hoping you would take off with that because I because I was driving. <laughs> no, but what I loved about it was, you know, even though I can it, do it. it what, I, but what I loved about it was that even though it was a strategy screen for the Jasper County Arts Council, it was something that Kaylee and I took away and we started to use it for the Morris Center because we sometimes think we have great ideas too. And you know, when you talk about mission drift, it's not necessarily um, just mission drift, but people also sometimes are just searching for money. So they start chasing money for mission drift. So, but go ahead. Yes. <laughs> That's a great point. Chasing money. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can agree with that. Um, I too, uh, took what we have, or will be using what we have from the art council, uh, with my work with the Legacy Foundation as well. So, you know, I got a two for it. But I'm also, as um, Tamara was said, we're engaging, uh, Ms. Dewan, engaging with Ms. Duana again for another project. So we're going to keep her busy. <laughs> but um, I like the... Uh, the strategies that we that we were learning at the time, because oftentimes when you're in our rural communities, their organizations and you muted yourself. You muted yourself. <laughs> Sorry, just my deck. Several organizations, and so we often get contacted about, um, you know, well, here's an idea, or do you guys offer this, or I need this, or I need that service. And so when I started this work, it was important for me to ask, does that fit within our mission? Is this um, is the ask from this particular client or organization or family, does that fit within, you know, our wheelhouse? And if it didn't, then it's not something that we could do. Um, so having uh, the strategy pyramid and 
the strategic plan options, um, asking those questions. And if it's important that you answer yes to all three of those, because if you, <laughs> a yes or no to all three, because if it does not match, then you're gonna, end, like you said, find yourself on mission drift. And we did end up trying to do some things or partner with organizations that were not in line with what we, what we wanted to do. And we had to pull back and say, you know what, this isn't working for us, or this isn't getting us to where we need to go. So with the Art Council, we did our art and community uh, work, uh, programs. Those were beneficial to the people that participated. And so we're looking to continue with that work and then also expand on it by um, doing an art exhibit with the artists that participate in those uh, programs. So that allows us to bring more attention to the programming that we offer through our council. And it also highlights those that have been impacted or inspired by what services we, we offer. So it's definitely been beneficial for us. Um, and then I'll wrap up after this next point. Um, I really liked in going through this, the strategic plan that we were given, given a timeline to where we could pivot back and forth as to the, the strategic goals that we had for each month or each period. And so we've been able to um, move forward on a lot of things. We've gotten our bylaws drafted. We um, did a community survey. We've got um, questionnaires that we're gonna be putting out with a QR code <laughs> to um, put out throughout the communities. So it's, it's, it's working for us. Um, we had a little hiccup over the holidays, but we're getting back into it. And so we're excited about, about that. And thank you guys for sharing that because it, that's really um, key to rapid response and uh, real-time planning. You have a hiccup, but you don't have to let you, you have that hiccup and you can respond in a short period of time as opposed to you keep chugging along and then you figure out months down the road that, oh, this isn't gonna work back way down here. So I see some questions from Joseph, but thank you guys for sharing. Are there any basic go-to techniques or advice on improving operational efficiency, preparedness, and execution? Does it all come down to training and technology? That's a great question. And honestly, so what I will say is it's also a loaded question. So because what areas what areas of operational deficiency? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So is it, um, you know, do you need more help in the finance, like the an accountant or finance department? Uh, do you need, like, what part of your operations? Um, ask, so let's go back to the big questions. Uh, what is a threat in the operational uh, efficiency area for you guys. What is what is problematic? Um, also preparedness. Uh, what happened in the past? What is problematic? So before you can ask, like the big question is, what do you do about X, Y, or Z? You've got to be able to have information to clearly identify the problems. Um, does it all come down to technology and training? Not always. Um, sometimes it's not having the right fit in the position. Sometimes it's uh, having the wrong mindset. So you think you guys need to pivot right, but you really need to pivot left. And once you are, are able to identify that, then you can put strategies in place to do that, that pivot that needs to happen. Um, but yeah, so I, I'll need a little more information, Joseph, um, and with eight minutes left, you can always email me. Um, can I interject right quick? Mm -hmm, sure. I think um, what I'm hearing or what I'm in hearing the question, uh, I said we had a workshop last, a couple of weeks ago um, in our peer network, and we talked about um, project management software. And so I think in hearing his question, hearing Joseph's question, I think looking into project management um, will help you with the way of executing tasks, find out are these the right people to carry out those tasks, a responsibility in their roles. And then also it helps you measure waste in your organization, whether it be financial or whether it be human capital. Um, I wanna add to that. I would add that, you know, 
in our case at Morris Center, we just did not do not have enough capacity. So it doesn't matter how efficient we're we're being, if we're taking on more than we can actually output, then it doesn't matter if it's organized or not. So I think it's about assessing, you know, do you really have enough human capital? And that's one of the strategy screen questions that we really had to look at hard because we have all these wonderful ideas that we want to implement for our community, but we just don't have the human capital to actually be able to pull it off. So I think, you know, you need to really take a take a beat and say, hey, you know, can we um, actually produce what we want with the capital that we have, the human capital that we have? Great answers, great answers. And thank you, Joseph, uh, for your response. Just hearing your response tells me we, sh we should evaluate our weaknesses and waste. Know the specifics and address them accordingly. Yes, uh, get specific. Um, and, and then that'll help you shape uh, what it is you need to do next, figure out what you need to do next or what questions you need to ask. Um, looking at the time, I think we've got six minutes left. Any other questions or comments? I have a question based on um, just things that I hear when I'm out in the field. When an organization has gone through all five phases of decline, how would you recommend they rebuild themselves to be an ef be effective not only for their community but within their organization? Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> last, I got to take my glasses off for this one. <laughs> uh, last year, uh, in in the Jasper uh, Arts Count Council folks know, I went to Bali for uh, a month. Um, mm -hmm. But before that, one of my toughest um, consulting clients uh, had that very problem, decline in all areas. Mm -hmm. um, and of course it started with funding and then it was staffing and all the things and then programming got real loosey goosey. And they brought me in and they said, you know, what do we do? And I, my, my answer was very hard for them to hear. I said, is y'all need to, y'all, <laughs> not me, y'all need to ask yourselves, is your work done? Because sometimes the decline is because your work is done. And they, the board took a, and I walked them through the process of an organizational audit. There, we, we looked at their resources. We, we looked at all the things. We looked at their programs and they decided it was time to sunset the organization. That happens sometimes. And what I, by asking themselves that question, by me asking them that question, because they weren't ready to ask themselves, but by me asking them that question, it gave them um, opportunity to be real, not just with themselves as board members, but with each other. And when they got there, they didn't need me anymore because they were, my last suggestion was don't just be like, eh, we're closing because you've done amazing work. Celebrate that work. Let the community know, let them know who's still doing this or who's, who you are supporting in the next phase of this and have a big old celebration. And they, they actually ended with a parade. Um, to so they were um, a place-based arts and environmental organization. And so many other folks had come in and had broken the work up that they had really started, but they also, you know, sometimes when uh, folks leave the heart of the organization and the passion leaves with it. And they had lost a lot of passionate folks and they really just wanted to be good stewards in the community, but they didn't realize that they could opt out at any time. And so that absolutely can happen and does. Um, and folks just have to, you know, really be honest to ask the question, is our work done? And they came to a consensus, and I believe it was all board members that, yeah, our work is done. And then it was a sigh of relief. So 
That was a great question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that, but I have had that experience. It stressed me out though, <laughs> because also, I mean, I am a consultant, but a lot of these nonprofits I have uh, partnered with or uh, have friends who work there or, and it was, um, I was like, oh no, what are they going to do? But I still had to shepherd them through that process. Thank you for that. Well, I'm my my computer says five fifty nine, y'all. All right. Well, if there's no further questions, um, or if you don't have any questions right now, please email Dewana with anything that you may have um, additional. But thank you so much for coming to this session of the South Carolina Arts Network. I hope to begin to see you next month, second Thursday of each month. And um, it's been a pleasure and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for your time. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.